Hi, I'm Jennifer Shoemaker, and I'm a psychology professor at Abilene Christian University. Today we're going to be doing a crash course in child development, and specifically we're going to be talking about how do we understand how children develop. The reason that I wanted to talk about this and to present to you a certain kind of theory that helps us understand kids and how they develop is because a lot of times when I'm talking about children and media and how media impacts children and their development, people will say to me, now, if a parent is just a good enough parent, if they're just teaching their child the right things, isn't that enough? Does it really matter what the media says? How is that going to impact a child at all? And since I've gotten that question several times, I decided it might be helpful for us to think about how children really develop. What does their research tell us about that? And how does that reflect in how a child ends up thinking about forces such as the media that are involved in their lives? So here we go. We're going to jump right in to talking about child development. I want to introduce you to a concept called bioecological theory. Bioecological theory was developed by Yuri Bronfenbrenner, and so he's the theorist that we're going to be using most as we talk about this today. Now, as you can see, just by looking at the name of it, there are two components to the bioecological theory. There's the bio part and the ecological part. So what do we mean when we say bioecological theory? That's a really big word. So let's break it down. The first part that we'll be talking about is the bio component. The bio component just means the person. So when we think about how a child develops, we're going to be thinking about who is this person? A lot of theories forget to take this into account, but as someone who's worked with children for the past 20 years, I think it's really important that we think not just about the different forces that surround a child and that will impact a child, but also about who that child is themselves. And so we've broken that down here when we think about these three different types of characteristics. So, who is the child? There are three ways that we can think about that. The first one that we're going to be thinking about is what's called force characteristics. Now, force characteristics are just those things about who a child is, like their temperament, or some people might call that their personality. But when we're thinking about temperament in particular, that is thinking about things like how much physical energy does the child have? How much positivity versus negativity do they usually use when they're looking at the world around them? How much um, distractibility do they have? How well are they able to focus their attention? How much do they like routine versus not liking routine? All of those things are components of our temperament. So we have to think about who the child is temperamentally. And the reason that's important when we think about how they interact with the world around them is that the world is going to look different to a child who's highly anxious, who doesn't like change, who isn't very good at expressing their emotions, for example, than a child who doesn't have that kind of temperament. The world may seem easier for the child who doesn't have to struggle with those kinds of things. And so the interaction between the systems that surround a child and that child's temperament them itself is really going to make a difference in how the child develops. So that's our first characteristic, force characteristics. The second one that we'll be looking at is demand characteristics. Thinking about demand characteristics, what we're talking about here is aspects of oneself that demand a response from the world around us. And so what we mean by that are things like age, gender, race, ethnicity. What are the things that people can see about me that may cause them to respond to me in a certain way? 
versus another way that they might respond to me if I were different in these ways. This is really important, again, because we're thinking about who the child is and what they bring into the interaction with the environment around them. And then our last characteristic that we'll be looking at is specifically resource characteristics. That is just what it says it is. A resource is the child's resources that they bring into the interaction. So here we're going to be thinking about things like socioeconomic status. We're going to be thinking about things like education of the family and of course of the child themselves as they get older and they're attending school. We're going to be even thinking about the kinds of lessons that that child is learning at home or in another situation that's very close to them about how they deal with the world around them. Let me give you an example. If my child who has two parents who are um, college educated and who also work at a university, if my child has difficulty in the educational system or setting and they come to me and they ask me for help on figuring out how to respond to say a misunderstanding with their teacher. I'm going to give them some resources as an educator on the best way to approach that teacher. Here's what I would do and how might you do that. But what if I'm a parent who doesn't have very much formal education? What if I'm a recent immigrant and I'm not familiar with the educational system in the United States? All of those are resources that a child may have or may not have and those are going to make a difference in how that child interacts with the systems around them. So those are the three components of the person that we're going to be most thinking about when we think about um, a child's development and how they interact with the system. The next component that we have to think about is the ecological part. So it's the bio-ecological system. Bio is person, ecological is about the systems. And we're going to be talking specifically about four systems I have on the board. Three of those are really the important component systems. And the other one is just about how certain systems interact with one another. So let's look at the first one. The first one that we have up here is the microsystem. When we're thinking about microsystems, what we mean by that are those systems in which the child is functioning every day and are directly interacting with. So that's going to include things like home, caregivers, siblings, so our family. It's also going to include things like our close peers, who we see every day and interact with. It's going to include our school and our teacher, the people who we're involved with on a daily basis, and even things like churches, if we go to a church often, or um, community groups that we're a part of. It may include sports teams, anything like that that a child is involved with on a regular basis and interacts closely with. So that's our microsystem. And the reason that's important to think about is because you think about what the question we asked earlier, which was, how does media impact a child's development? Is there really any reason why I should consider issues connected to media if I have a good microsystem or family? And I'm going to tell you about that right now. So we have our microsystem, which is our family. The meso system, what that is, that's that interaction part. It talks about how do the systems that are in my microsystem, so like my home, my family, my school, my athletic team, how do those all work together? How do they interact with one another? That's important to remember because if you have a child whose home and school don't interact well for one reason or another, that's going to get in the way of them being able to perform as well in that setting. So that's all the meso system is. Next we have the exosystem. Now the exosystem are those systems in a child's life 
that impact the child on a daily basis but aren't as closely related. So what I would put here would be things like a parent's work environment, for example. Um, you know, if I had a bad day at work, if things aren't going well, that might affect my children and their day in the long run, but it's not a direct effect so much. Uh, they may not be up at the office and experiencing that same stress that the parent is. But what we also have here is the media. And the reason I put mass media here is that mass media is involved with the child's life daily because children, the research tells us, are involved with media on an average of almost 12 hours a day. And so these children are consuming media on a regular basis. They're directly connecting with it, but most of them aren't involved in making that media and, in, and directly communicating with the people who make that media. And so that's why I say it might not be in the microsystem, but it is in the exosystem. And what that means is that media is just as much involved in influencing a child's development as, say, their parents' work environment or the school district in which they attend or things like the city council of the city they live in that's making some changes that are going to affect them but they may not be directly involved with. So you can see when we think about the bioecological theory how much those all connect. The last system that we'll be looking at is the macro system. The macro system, when I think about this, is just the big overall culture that the child is involved in. And so you can think about things like the American culture. You can think about things like the focus on women and their value being connected to how they look, which of course affects the exosystem of the media and advertising and marketing, which of course then affects the child. And the reason that's important to know is because when we're having to deal with forces from the macro system, which is out here, or the exosystem, which is here, it's really important for those of us who are in the micro system, which is the home, which is the family, which is the community groups or the school, it's important for the people who are involved in these closer in systems to be thinking about how do I help that child learn how to respond to the messages that they're going to be getting from these outer systems. And so that right there is a crash course for you in child development to start understanding the ideas behind why might something like mass media or marketing affect a child's development? And the reason is that a child isn't growing up in a vacuum of just their family or the little microsystem. Instead, what we have to think about is that the child is going to be affected in their development by what happens here in our microsystem, but also in our exosystem and our macrosystem. And the more that we are aware of that, as people who are working in the micro system with the child and thinking about the child's own needs based on who they are, then the more we can prepare them, the more we can educate them, and the more we can equip them to deal with the kinds of pressures and messages that they're going to be getting from those outer systems. That's our crash course in bioecological theory today. Come back later and we'll have another one.